very loud, thunderous voice. Yeah. So I just always really need to check. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. Good. I've been practicing all my thunder. Can you shut the doors? So we are going to talk about today how to get on Google's radar, and I will introduce myself in a little bit, but if you guys are interested in what this is, we're going to talk about search engine optimization today. So if you guys are not interested in SEO, I will not feel bad if you call off the work, it's okay. But if you guys are interested in SEO, that is what we're going to talk about today, and I'd like to a few times, and I always like to cover the myths about SEO before I do anything else, because there are many falsehoods out there on the internet about SEO, and I really like to make sure we're all on the same page. So, the first myth I always hear from everyone is that you can get on page one of Google in a month. How many people have gotten an email from a company or a person saying they promise they will get you on Google? In a month. I get them every day, they go straight to the spin folder. It's a bold face lie. Okay? So, what I tell people that come to me and ask me if they can get on Google in a month is that typical results for SEO are that I can get you there, but you're going to have to wait four to six months to see site wide results because Google is slow and they don't care about you as an individual. They are doing many, many websites. So as good as you are, there's no guarantee you're going to be there in a month. Okay? Myth number two, this one is very, very popular lately, is that I have a website I've launched. I do blogging very consistently. I'm creating content for content marketing. So obviously, I'm going to be on Google's radar. I have a leg up. That is something that's going around the internet a lot. Content marketing is very, very, very useful at attracting Google. The problem is that content, for content's sake, does you no good, you just spend hours doing it. <coughs> it's the myth that we all want to believe. Because we want to know that the hour that we took writing lots of blog posts, the half hour we took editing, maybe five minutes if you're really good, and then the 20 minutes struggling with how to format it on our website means that we have a leg up. So, the truth is, Google's a woman. She's a very classy broad. Her algorithms are as complicated and her, as a woman's shoe collection, they're ever changing and she is not an easy lady. All right? She's not a date one kind of person. She doesn't accept scrubs. So try not to do that. The third myth is that SEO is so easy. I have watched the gurus. I went to this short chick's class at WordCamp. I know how to do this stuff now. I can get on Google given enough time and practice. Given enough time and practice and waiting, your business will fail. And you'll be back looking at the classified ads. Okay? Nobody that is trying to build a business, that is trying to make money or attract attention has enough time to wait for Google. Because websites today are the same as a business card 20 years ago. Everybody has one. I have money. I don't take them anywhere. Personally, because I don't care. I don't use them. Because I have a website that I can take people to. But everyone has business cards. And if you are a woman, you will know this to be 100% true. Our purses are heavy. I only have so much room in there for what really matters, which means I only keep business cards for the people that really stand out to me. So the same goes true for your website. Okay. So I know I didn't introduce myself earlier. I'm going to go ahead and do it now so you guys know a little bit more about me. My name is April Meckler. I am the co-founder of Fuse. We are a web development and SEO firm here in Jacksonville. I am also a total internet nerd. My goal is to get people visible, not just to their ideal audience, 
but to the people that have the money that are going to buy. Okay? I use web design, SEO, and marketing to help people because everything you put online is marketing. I'm one half of the team. The other team member is in the back with the deep leaf hat. I'm also a vegan animal hugger. If you have pets, I want to see pictures, please tag me on Twitter. April underscore Meckler. I would love to see your animals. I'm also the main squeeze of tomorrow's 8 a.m. session about Headless WordPress. Just thought I'd throw a little plug in there. And if you guys are interested, I do multiple talks per week online to try to help business owners and bloggers seduce Google and find their ideal selling clients. Okay. So my big question for you guys today is how are we going to make you stand out? There are millions and millions of websites. They are all vying for the same page one position that you guys are. So how do you guys stand out? I have a four-step formula to seduce Google. I use it for every single one of my clients. And if you guys are wondering, it is a game of seduction. You have to court her. Be real nice. Speak her language. Give her flowers. That kind of thing. Because, again, Google's a woman. You have to impress her. So in this four-step formula, we're going to talk about strategy for your SEO overall. We're going to teach you how to look for real life keywords so you can then take those on your website and also in your content marketing. I'm going to talk to you about on-page and off-page SEO and how that works logistically. Then I'm going to help you guys out and give you guys some plugins that you can use because I know not everyone in here is a developer. And if you guys are wondering what I'm talking about, I want to be very, very clear, because I see you guys, and I'm really worried that you saw my last slide, and you are not going to get the right message. There's a really big bubble on this screen. Okay, It's all about keywords. <coughs> keywords are a huge buzzword for a reason. They are very important. If you have bad keywords, or the wrong keywords, you will show up for unsavory things on Google and not for what your customers are looking for. But keywords are not the only part of the equation. If you do not have every single one of these bubbles in your strategy plan, you will not seduce Google. You will not get a second date. And you will be waiting and waiting and waiting forever. Okay. So I'm going to talk about SEO's secret sauce. Step one is your strategy. Okay. SEO strategy is very complicated. I wish I could tell you that I could teach it to you today, but I would need to know you intimately and your business or your blog in order to do that. So we're going to talk about some main ideas about your strategy. The reason why you need a comprehensive strategy that covers all four bubble points it's because if you are not 100% clear on who your audience is, what they're typing into Google, what Google is throwing up for the keywords that you're trying to look for, and how your site is set up, Google won't know either. Google is not some deity that is all-knowing. They don't know you at all. all right? You have to get in there, and you have to be very clear when you are doing your three-second pitch when they are crawling you, all right? I hear a lot of people talk about just keywords, like I said, and it's not about just the keywords. I want you guys to hear that a couple times today, because I know a lot of people just focus on keywords, and they end up missing the big picture. Okay. An effective SEO strategy takes understanding. You have to understand who your audience is. You have to understand how search engine optimization works. You have to understand how Google sees your site. It also takes time. Like I said, typical results are four to six months. It doesn't always happen. 
I have been very lucky to get people on the map sooner than that, but I have seen some people who had website for 25 years not show up on Google because they had no idea how to do search engine optimization. And another thing that people don't understand a lot of times is that SEO happens on your site and off your site. There are many factors that Google is looking at. There's actually over 36 factors that Google looks at. And you have a lot of control over most of them. If you are a developer, you have control over a large majority. If you're a marketer, you have control over a bigger majority, which is how it works. Okay. So we're going to go on to step two, which is the in real life keywords. So this is the number one fail that I see people do with SEO. It's that they tend to think in their industry, they get too much in their heads. So they use industry jargon to try to get on Google. And this works sometimes. If you are in a very niche field, I have one customer, and they are extremely niche. There's only a couple of them in the world. But they were using only industry terminology, and the people that were searching for their products were marketing chicks that had no idea, no tech savvy. They didn't know what one thing was from another. They just called it all fountains. I need fountain stuff. So it took them a long time. So some examples of industry jargon, a lot of people want to say script, especially if you're a developer. What you should be saying, especially if you're a marketer, I'm sorry, not a developer, a marketer, we have these fonts, and people call them scripts. And what they really need to say is cursive or swirly language, because they're not teaching cursive in school anymore, kids. So, if you're talking to a younger generation, maybe call them squiggly words. But for now, you can still call them cursive. If you are a photographer, you might be very familiar with the uh, term bokeh. I'm pretty sure that's how it's pronounced. Okay. Okay? Thank you. Everyone else calls it blurry background. No one really knows what it is unless you're in the photography business or you've done a lot of Googling already. So, if you want to hit the right customers, you may want to be doing an article or put something on your site that says blurry backgrounds and explain to people what they are so that Google can also know when people are typing that in, oh, this is that person. Let me fill them up. All right. I want you guys to think like your clients or the customers that you are trying to attract. Because yes, you're trying to attract Google, but who's the other person on that keyword, or the keyboard? It's a real live human, and they use common terms. Please do not write a book when you're looking for two keywords, okay? Another good thing to do is to reach out, pick up the phone, go behind your keyboard, and talk to your ideal clients Ask them how they found you. Ask them what they call different things. You can do it in a survey. If you have past clients that are really happy with what you gave them, they will be happy to do this for you. Okay. There are also several SEO resources and tools online. Some of them are free. I'm going to give you some of them today. And you can also use those to try to help you. Okay. One of those tools is called Google Keyword Planner. This is the holy grail, my friends, of all SEO stuff. If you use the Google Keyword Planner, you are going to the source, all right? Google made some changes recently that you need to have had an active ad running within 15 months to be able to use it. It was previously free as long as you made an account. There are ways around this. There are very easy ways around this. But if you guys have had one in 15 months, I'm just going to assume that you did. It is a great source. What I want you to do when you are using this is I want you to look up terms that you have already picked out that are common, that you've asked your clients about. And I want you to type them in and see 
how many people are searching for those? And there's a thing called low. They grade everything low, medium, high. That is the search volume that they're talking about. And that search volume is going to be very, very important. We're going to look at that in a minute. But I want you guys to only focus on the low. These are what you're going to use for your blog topics and your keywords. Now, if you're already established, be my guest. Go for the high. I do a mixture of all of them. But I want you to also take these numbers with a grain of salt because there is no Google Gods. Google is made by programmers, and they are doing their best to throw data at you. They are also very aware that they don't need to give you all the data. So they have very large ranges for all of these, and sometimes they change. So if you're looking at Google Keywords Planner, you are going to see things like this. These are search volumes and competition, okay? This is how many people are trying to use those keywords. Now, if you guys see, I have only highlighted the low and the medium here, and I want you to focus on the low. Anything between 100 and 1,000, I want you guys to focus on. And I want you to do this not because it's absolutely the best way, but because for many people it is the easiest judge of what to use. And I know you guys are thinking, well, thousand people, my God, that girl sucks. I need way more money than that. I need more traffic. But you have to understand that if this is competition and people are searching for these, and not a lot of people are using them, but a thousand people are talking about them in Google, then you have a real good chance of being one of those people that shows up on page one. And if you do a couple articles on the same topic for the same keyword, you have more of a chance. And if you have this throughout your web page, on your home page, on your contact page, on your about page, on your service pages, have even more of a chance. Okay? I have a client where there is a particular keyword that is a little bit broad called water feature consultants. And if you type that in, or if you type in um, water feature conceptual, that means that it's the thinking phase, it's the really artsy phase where people are going crazy. They show up on the first three. And that is the same client that had a website and a business for 25 years and never sold a single thing online. They did over half a million, or sorry, over $500,000 just in SEO last year. That was about an hour of work. It booked out two out of their three factories for seven months. And they are over a million dollars due to marketing, which included their SEO. Last year low. That's after 25 years of zip. And they were only doing it for less than a year for SEO. Okay. The next thing I want you to do, which is actually proving to be lately a little bit better and easier for people, the keyword planner, is to follow the trends. What I'm talking about is Google Trends. So if you guys type in trends.google.com slash trends, because I want to say it twice, you will find a website that shows you the trends of what people are actually searching in Google. You can do it by keyword. You can change it from happening in the past year to what people are typing in the past three months, this quarter, right now, today, what is popular on Google. All right. You can also do the same thing for YouTube. So if any of you guys are trying to use YouTube, Google Trends is going to be really good and helpful for you. You can also filter by location. So I would say almost all of my clients are trying to target people in the U.S. So I can target the U.S. and I can see specific regions and states that 
those keywords are popping up higher in, in how often they're doing them. So if I am, let's say, a photographer that does baby photos, portraits, either in the hospital or outside of it, and I'm trying to type in some keywords to see where I might be better used for my services, I found out Oregon was really good. I don't live in Oregon, but I sure as hell will travel to Oregon to photograph your baby if you pay me. <laughs> so, I'm going to start writing articles and put on my website that I travel to Oregon. It's only like a couple states away. And I travel to Oregon because you guys want it. These are my baby photos. These are photos you could get from a photographer in the hospital when you look like crap because you just gave birth. And I'm not going to lie, not all of us look real pretty right afterwards. Sometimes they come in. I was an in-hospital photographer for babies. Sometimes we come in three hours after you gave birth. And you tell us, please leave. I say, okay. So the photos you take at home with your family are going to look really nice. Here's my stuff. Please book me. So when you're on it, it's going to look a lot like this. I just used SEO for this example. Over here is where you can type in the region and get more specific. It'll also show you. So for SEO, of course, New York was number one lately in the past three months. So if you guys also provide SEO services, I'm going to tell you right now you should start writing articles about New York and SEO and do case studies because you will get them. And if you guys are interested in seeing a video about Google Trends, I don't know how it works on Android, I'm so sorry, but if you have an iPhone and you open up your camera app and all you do is go like this, don't take a picture, it will pop up a link and it will take you directly to this video. In this video, shameless plug, I did an Instagram story, or sorry, a live a few weeks ago where I showed people how to use Google Trends and we did real life examples for people's businesses right on there. I did a photographer, a fashion photographer, and I did a brand stylist. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lovely speaking point. Um, and if you guys watch this video, one, I will be really, really happy because it is my first video on YouTube. But two, for this company, for two, if you guys could please put in the comments the hashtag that we're using on Twitter so I know that you guys saw it because of this presentation, and I would be very happy. I'm very interested to see this. It's my own experience. But don't worry, this will be online too, so you can always pop it in us later. Okay. And the really big thing that I want to focus on too is that please, 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 when you are trying to figure out your keywords, do not stop here. Do not stop with all of the SEO tools out there, because while they are good, there are other factors that affect your SEO, like social. If you guys are not aware, Google looks at who has their social media accounts hooked up to their website and how many people are talking about your blog post or your website. Because Google's an it girl. She's the popular kid in high school, and social validation means everything. You can have a lovely website, you can write beautiful, long blog posts, but if everybody hates you, she hates you too. <laughs> you can't sit at her table. All right? It's not about what's inside, it's about what you have other people saying about you. This is word of mouth marketing done on the internet. All right? So, one way to get other people to start talking about you is to start creating content that people want to share. All right? It's very difficult for some people to get their head around this concept because if you wrote it and it's grammatically correct, it's got pictures, I mean, you should share my crap. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> That's how I feel. But that's not really always true. All right? It helps if you do a couple things. One of them
them is if you make it very easy for people to share your content from your site. If you guys go to websites, sometimes you see that bar along the left hand side or the bottom, and it's always, this has been shared this many times, please share. Do them a solid and share, because that helps their SEO. But they're also just trying to make it easy to have SEO for their sites and for you to start talking about them. But if you are still in the keyword phase, there's a couple things that you can do. If you are questioning what makes something searchable, what makes people want to click that button and share, I want you guys to go to social media. All right? Facebook is my favorite because they do something special. Uh, LinkedIn, Pinterest is really good. You can use hashtags on Instagram. Um, there are every single social media site has a way to do this. I'm going to use Facebook for this presentation. So if you go to Facebook, you can do it on your phone or on a website. There's a search bar up here. It's a little bit short. I can't reach. But it's there. All right? If you guys type a subject, I typed SEO, obviously, into there, it's going to have a lot of choices right here in the navigation for what you can do. I want you to go over here to links. So some of you guys have never looked at links before. I do, because I'm nosy. So if you guys look at links, you're going to see the top articles that are being shared. All right, these are articles, people, on people's websites or on YouTube off of Facebook, okay? You can see what kind of content people are interested in talking about. Over here, you will see how many times people have shared that one piece of content that someone wrote. So it's not just about having it on your site, you need to get people to talk about it. There are many different ways, but that is a different presentation for a different day to do this. But this is really good for data. It will help you take those topics, put your own spin on them, then you have a totally different point of view. And you will be able to write articles about them. You guys can use this data to see what kind of titles are very appealing to people, what kind of imagery is really appealing to people, what people are putting in the description of the article that is very appealing to people. And that is what matters, guys. Because if people start talking about you, you have to work less. You don't have to do as much marketing. I love that. I love working less. Okay. <laughs> Step three is the logistics of SEO. So I've talked about how to use your keywords, that you need a strategy, first of all. This is the fun part. If you're a developer in the room, you might be really used to seeing some of this. If you're a user in the room of WordPress, some of this might not look as familiar to you, but I tried to break it down. And if you guys have any questions, I'm available afterwards to talk to you. We're going to go over how to stand out on Google right while you're making your post or your page. Okay. So on-page SEO, one point up. This is how Google reads your site. This is not necessarily any kind of order. I just had to use bullet points and numbers. They look at things like heading tags, the body content, which are paragraph tags. They use the alt tags for images. And they use link title tags. <coughs> this is how Google is judging you. And so if you don't have some of these components on your site, you might be doing yourself a disfavor and holding yourself back. Like I said before, there is well over 36 aspects that Google are looking at. Here are just a few of them. <coughs> this right here, this beautiful, colorful piece of whatever, this is your blog page. This is the blog post that you just wrote. All right? You have your heading tag. We're going to call it H1. Your heading tag should be H1. Because that is the first thing that Google is going to see when they're looking at all of the topics on your page. You have your image here because you made a beautiful picture. You need to click into that image and you need to give it an alt tag. That alt tag tells Google 
what that picture says because Google can't see like that. They're not cool. They don't see all the hard work that you did. They just see what it's called. <coughs> they have body content and paragraph tags. That's right here. And above that, you have your subheadings. Those are the other H's. They have to. And if you guys are interested in seeing how Google might be looking at your page, there's a really fun resource called HTML5 Outliner. When you go to this web page, you will think it's from 1990 and that it is no longer active. It's very basic. It's very ugly. <coughs> HTML5 <coughs> Outliner. It is going to show you how your headings are arranged in the way that Google sees them on your page. Some of you might be surprised that you have stuff on there that's not related to your blog posts. Stuff like related posts or something in your footer. I saw one because I stalk other people's websites that had the word share a lot. Their company had nothing to do with sharing. The blog post had nothing to do with sharing. But that's what they were seeing as far as Google was concerned. Right? And if you guys are interested about that link tag, I put an example right here. It's going to show up on your page. When you look at it in WordPress, you can go to the text section, and it's going to look like an A here. And it's going to say, for this one, my awesome site. That's what you're going to call that link. But what shows up on the page is nerds welcome. You want to make sure you have titles on all those links. Because otherwise, Google doesn't really care so much. Plus, it's a bad thing. Okay. Now we're going to talk about on-page SEO 2.0. That's the human influence of SEO that we were talking about before, where you want people to be talking about what you are creating. That is the page title and meta description for your site. Because while you are trying to impress Google, you have to remember that you really just kind of want to get paid, or you want traffic on your site. And Google's really nice, but they're not going to put money in your bank. And so you need to make sure someone clicks on your site. This is our very own Jack's Chamber. This is human SEO. When you type it into Google, this is what shows up. This right here is your page title. This is your meta description. And in a few minutes, I'm going to show you how you can control that really easily without being a developer. But this right here, I don't want you to skip it over. Because no matter how nice your website is, no matter how much work you put into that blog post or that service page, I don't care. You need a way to seduce me to get me to click on your site. Because <laughs> if you showed up on page one, that's really nice. That's cool. I'm glad that you're related to my post. But if you have a really crappy title, if you just said, puppies are here, and in the description, you said Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, puppies are here, and then looking to get dog grooming, I don't really care enough about your site to click on that. You need to make sure I care. So let's talk a little bit briefly about the off-page SEO. That is backlinks, shared content, social validation again. Some of these things you have control over, some of them you don't. So a really easy way to get people talking about it, about whatever you do or whatever it is that you write about, is to get backlinks. Google cares about that because if your link backlinks, are from a very reputable source that gets a lot of traffic, and they're talking about you, man, that's as good as being called out from across the room by the popular girl. You just got five minutes of fame. All right? And a good way to get backlinks is to start reaching out to people. And I know that we live in a digital age and we all hate to talk to people in real life. So you guys can do this on the phone or via email, I want you guys to start reaching out 
to popular sites, podcasts, anything like that. And I want you guys to start telling them, hey, I would love to do something for you. And if I do it really, really, really well, and you like me, because I'm awesome and I'm cool, I want you to please, please, please put my name on your website somewhere. It could be tiny, I don't care. And if you could link that to my site, that would be more really nice. I would wait till maybe like your second conversation to say that though, guys, because it's the same thing as a date. You're like all excited and saying all these things, and they're like, oh no, I'm sorry. Oh, I just got a phone call, guys. I gotta go. All right, you have to be seductive in those emails as well. Remember this trick from just a few minutes ago? This trick is going to help you. Because not only do you know that Facebook likes to talk about this, but if you are trying to get backlinks or social validation or more content talked about, it's really good to know what people want to hear about. So when you're trying to pitch people so that you can get those coveted backlinks, it's real good to know what's popular. It's also really good if you're looking at another blog to look at their recent past posts to see what they're writing about, their style, make sure it matches up with you, your morals, your ethics, the way you flow. And then when you do, you hit them with something that you know their audience likes, you like to talk about, and people online talk about 1,273 times for that one piece of content. So when you're pitching them this idea, it's really good to make sure that you have that to back up in the future, just to know that it's a popular subject. Okay, step four, if you're running out of time, is the plugins. So this is really good for you guys that are not super technical. I'm gonna tell you now, I design websites for a living. I do SEO for a living. I cannot get my printer to hook up for the life of me. I've had it for three years. <laughs> if one of you knows how to do that, please come to my house, I'll feed you. I'll promise that if you're not vegan, I won't make vegan stuff. My boyfriend's not vegan either. He eats my food, he hasn't died yet. Um, but these are the things that are gonna help the users who are not good with coding. And if you just want a little bit easier way, because you're lazy like me, you want to spend less time doing it. Okay. Plugins help you control SEO in a very easy way. There are several of them out there. Many of them are free. Some of them have premium options. <laughs> and they also can help you control what is said about your site on social media. So remember when we were looking at the Facebook, when we were looking at what the topics were, the title, the description, it helps you control that. It helps you control what your image is gonna be. Maybe you don't want it to be the same on social media as on your blog post, that's okay. So I know it's a little bit hard to hear, or sorry, see, but this is called Yoast. Yoast SEO is my favorite WordPress plugin ever, of all time, hands down. It is free, I'm just gonna put that out there now. There's a premium version, I've used it once. That client that I told you, that has made over $500,000 last year with SEO, they have the free version, they're on page one. Okay. It's a very popular plugin. It's been downloaded over 7 million times. Can you imagine that there's more than 7 million websites out there using just one product? Must be good. That's social validation right there. It's very user friendly. I'm going to show you in a second. And I highly recommend it because it has real time monitoring of your keywords that are on the page. It tells you a bunch of different statistics and data. It gives you a uh, red light, green light, uh, orange light way to score how you're doing. So you know if you're red, if you're in the red, you gotta do something else on your page, friend. 
and they will tell you what you need to do. They'll even count how many times that keyword that you're trying to reach for is on your page for you. You don't have to do it. And I really like this because I truly believe the best things in life are free, like Yoast. Okay. <laughs> this right here might look really familiar to you because that is what shows up on Google. We were just looking at it a little bit ago with the Jack's Chamber. But this is Yoast. This is what's on your blog post, right? They give you an easy way to edit everything right here for the title and the meta description. This is what it looks like when you click that button to edit. You can change the title, they tell you if it's a good length. You can change the meta description, they tell you if it's a good length. All right? They will also <laughs> judge it for you and score it right there. So you can make changes very easily. This is the social part. You can control what Facebook spits out when somebody shares your content. And if you're not sure what Facebook spits out when someone shares your content, they have a web page called the Facebook Debugger. That's what it's called, they named it. It's very ugly. And if you put any website URL in there, they will tell you what it's going to look like. So if you have something shared on Facebook and your image is not showing up, they'll show you. They'll tell you why. If you have a title that you did not write, that you don't know where that's coming from, they'll show you. They'll tell you why. But Yoast will help you control it. So this right here, this stoplight, that was what we were talking about for Google. This is what controls social. You can do Facebook and Twitter, okay? You can change what the title's gonna be, the description. Facebook, I will tell you right now, and Twitter, they have their own sizing for images that a lot of people don't use for their actual site. You can add, they tell you the dimensions right here. You can add a separate image. That only shows up on those sites. It's very, very helpful because none of my images are that size. So I use this every time. And the old way to do it, if you go to Twitter or Google and you search for how to fix this if it's not correct, they give you code to put on there. That's great. You know how to do it. If you don't know how to do it, you can hire someone like me and I'll do it for you. But if you are wanting to do it yourself and take control of your website, you can download this free plugin and it'll do it for you. So I know we're running out of time, but the bottom line of my entire presentation, if you don't get anything else, is that you need SEO on your site if you want it to do anything. Make you money, advertise your business, but you have to work less. SEO and Google will be your 24 seven salesman. You don't even have to pay them. It's like child labor if you have kids, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> You sit them at the front and you say, you greet people, smile, tell them, hang on, I'll be there in a second. <laughs> All right? Google will be your child here. It's not a magical unicorn. SEO is completely achievable for everyday people. It all depends on you. How much time you take developing your strategy? How much time you take finding the right keywords? How much time you take creating content on your website and your blog? that's going to help seduce Google. If you don't care about SEO, then I really hope that you enjoyed this presentation, <laughs> but you'll probably be bored to tears. And if you are interested in SEO, I really hope that you are more confident in how you're gonna go forward in life and how you're going to maybe tweak your SEO strategy. Because SEO, just like Google, kind of a woman, it's ever-changing, you got to keep up with it, all right? It's like trends and fashion. If you have something stale for too long, somebody else came out with a better version, and they are now on your number one spot. You need to keep up with it, and you need to make sure that you're watching it constantly. And if you need help, please get help. There are many, many sources out there. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. 
Some of them are like this, where you come to events and get talked to by some short girl. <laughs> but if you're looking for more resources, I gave you a list here. You can take a photo, you can go watch this online. The best resource, if you're looking into WordPress or SEO, is to come to our local meetups every month. I'm there. Other people are there. We have nothing else to do for a couple hours. We'll talk to you. We're there because we're willing to talk to people. Another good thing is Google Webmaster Tools. I separated them because that's the best one. It's straight from the source. They'll tell you how to seduce them. All right? It's like one of those Tinder profiles. I like this, this, and this. If you have this, you can talk to me. If you don't have this, please don't talk to me. YouTube has some great, amazing tutorials. Please use them. Take them with a grain of salt. Do some backup investigation on whether or not that person really knows what they're talking about. There's a WordPress development community. You can go in there. Some of the SEO people are in there. If you're looking up Yoast, Yoast has tons of blog posts. They have courses, I believe. Some of them are free on how to use their product. And if you're also interested in Yoast, I didn't mention it before. It's less than a 10 minute install. You can do it straight from the plugins feature on WordPress. They have a wizard that helps you do the whole thing. It's 10 steps. And if you're interested in more and you want to ask questions, and it's a Thursday, you can come on Facebook, because my partner in the Deeply Hat and I do a Facebook Live every Thursday at 8 p.m. We have a different topic each time, but we take all questions. And there are a lot of them. From people that have websites that don't even know how to get into them sometimes, up to developers, a speaker that was here earlier was also on our Facebook Live. We have guest speakers from all over. And those live on Facebook. So if you, even if it's not Thursday, or if it's not the meetup day, you can go watch them. I would appreciate it. All right. You guys can also contact me if you have any questions. I put my email address there. It's april at myfused.com. I answer the email. I don't have a VA. I know Elizabeth was talking about it earlier. I'll get to that. I'm working on the control issue. <laughs> but I answer all the emails. He doesn't. I will help you. <laughs> Questions answered. And I just basically want you guys to know that SEO is achievable. And you guys can do it. You don't have to be SEO experts. It's achievable. It helps if you get somebody that knows what they're doing but you guys can do it yourselves. And are there any questions?